Some kind of wonderful. Well, we did a little bit of rewriting on that, but in all fairness, um, Mark Farner, who is the leading member of Grand Funk Railroad for you baby boomers, um, that was, uh, the original song was Some Kind of Wonderful, My Baby, My Sweetie, My Girlfriend is Some Kind of Wonderful. But later on in life, Mark Farner became a born-again Christian, and he rewrote that to my Jesus. And so... He's going to take all the credit for that, but we certainly enjoy doing it. And uh, again, we uh, thank you for tuning in, being a part of our service, and uh, we pray it's a blessing to you and uh, puts a smile on your face in this time that we find ourselves living. i 
somebody whispered Somebody whispered in my ear Somebody whispered Somebody whispers in my ear Jesus, I can feel him when he's This next song we've been <laughs> working on for the last month, and uh, we're going to give it a try tonight. It's uh, kind of an oldie but goodie, and uh, we did a little bit of rewriting to it, but uh, uh, hopefully it'll bless you as much as it blesses me the first time we did this and Kathy sang, and it's awesome. One, two, three, four. Oh uh... 
Well, Monday was Memorial Day, and uh, again, Memorial Day is the day that we remember those that paid the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. Our freedom. Freedom to live where we want, freedom to worship where we want, freedom to go to school where we want, freedom to go whatever restaurant we want to go to. We are free in this country because of the sacrifices made by so many brave men and women and this is the day that we take the time to remember them to be thankful for their sacrifice on on our behalf i remember growing up as a kid memorial day was always a big day for us we'd have a family cookout generally it was family and friends and we would have a cookout in the backyard or we'd have a cookout at the park and there would always be a bunch of us kids, cousins, friends, relatives. We'd all get together. We'd have an awesome time. We'd have a great cookout. But it always ended with my dad putting a record on of one of the marches. And all us kids and the adults would grab our American flags and we would have our own little parade. And it was just a fun time. But growing up, as I got older, I, I realized the sacrifice that my dad had made in the Navy and how proud he was to have served his country. And this was just one small way of him honoring the flag that he served under, honoring the country that he served and helping us remember that there's many of those men and women that never came home. And so we honor that ultimate sacrifice because Memorial Day, number one, is the day to mourn loss. We mourn the loss of those that didn't make it home, those that went and served our country but didn't make it home. I was reading a story as I was preparing this message about a battle that took place in World War I. And so just to kind of set the picture for you, we have the American soldiers on one side of this no man's land as they called it and the German army on the other side and they were shooting at each other and throwing hand grenades and whatever they did back then and there was one German soldier that was trying to get back to his side and he got shot and down he went and as he went down he got tangled in barbed wire now I don't know if you know what barbed wire is we we have that here in Texas but it's wire with sharp edges on it and this poor soldier got tangled in this and he was just laying there shouting for help and they kept shooting and they kept shooting and finally one American soldier who couldn't stand hearing this poor man 
cry and, and, and holler out for help anymore, got in his belly and he crawled out to this German soldier to try to untangle him from this barbed wire. And the Americans realized what was going on and they stopped shooting. But the Germans kept shooting. And this man kept trying to dodge the bullets and untangle this poor man. And finally the Germans realized what was happening and they also stopped shooting and there was this awesome silence and as this American untangled this German, stood up, put his arm around his shoulder and took him to his group, to his men, to his side, and turned around and headed back. All of a sudden he felt this hand on his shoulder and he turned around and it was a German soldier who had won the Iron Cross. And he pulled the Iron Cross off of his shirt and put it on this American soldier shirt he gave him a hug both men went back to their sides and began shooting all over again but it's just a reminder that there were sacrifices made for you and for me for the freedom for you and for me so memorial day is a time to mourn loss i don't know if you've seen pictures of these wars the World War I, World War II, the Vietnam War. I mean, you go all the way back. You see these pictures of these soldiers just laying dead. Just thousands of soldiers laying dead in these fields from both sides. And it gives you kind of an eerie feeling. Kind of gives you an upset feeling in your stomach. Well, let me ask you this. What about the paintings that have been done that portray, or the movies that have been done that portray what our Savior went through, the sacrifice that he made to be beaten beyond recognition, to be nailed to a cross, a criminal's death, and to die to give us freedom. Do those pictures give you an eerie feeling? Do those pictures make you sick to your stomach? They should. So Memorial Day is a time to mourn loss. Also, Memorial Day number two is a time to remember the lives, to to remember the lives of those that served, to remember the lives of those that went to serve our country and never came home. Never came home. Because of their sacrifice, we are free. Like I said earlier, we're free to eat where we want, worship where we want, We're free to go to school where we want and work where we want. And this past week in Uvalde, Texas, which isn't too terribly far from where we are here in the studio, those children and those teachers that were murdered by that gunman, they were free too. They had the right to be free, to go to school where they wanted to, to work where they wanted to, to play where they wanted to. And yet, that mad gunman took their lives. We need to remember them as well this Memorial Day. We need to remember that whole town. We need to remember the people there that lost loved ones. We need to remember the students that are still there that saw and heard the cries of their classmates being brutally murdered by this mad gunman. We need to remember that freedom isn't always free. And lastly, Memorial Day is the time to celebrate freedom. Celebrate freedom. Celebrate the freedom that we have because of the sacrifices of others. We stand here today, brothers and sisters, a free people. We can have this worship service and not worry about somebody coming in and shutting us down. We can go to whatever church we want to. When we're done here, we can go to whatever restaurant we want to eat. We can go and work wherever we want to work. We can drive wherever we want to drive. We are a free people. And the more you see things going on around the world, you realize how precious that freedom really is. But let me tell you about another freedom. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to John 8.36. 
John 8.36. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. We've gone through a lot as a country. You've gone through a lot. We see things all around us as we get closer to the end times. But let me ask you a very important question. Are you free? Has the Son set you free? Have you taken the time to accept the gift that God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, who came and paid the ultimate sacrifice for you and for me? So that we could one day be one with the Father. So that one day we will go to be with Him and not be left behind. As the song we sang earlier. Don't be the one that's left behind. The next thing that's going to happen is called the rapture of the church. Jesus is going to come back and He's going to take His saints. Those of us that have accepted His gift have accepted him as Lord and Savior simply by saying, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. We're going to get airlifted out of here. And then things are going to get really bad. You think things are bad now? Nothing in comparison to what's going to happen after the rapture of the church. And so this Memorial Day, I urge you, if you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, do it now. Pray this simple prayer with me. Lord, I love you. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart. I want to be born again. Simply by praying that simple prayer, you have become a born again Christian. You have freedom in the Son because the Son has set you free. God bless you. And now let's return to the worship. I will always be true. No one ever be leaving. I will be here with you. Through the storms and the seasons. Through the sun.
this next song we typically only do at Christmas time, but we talked about it and thought, well, this isn't necessarily a Christmas song, but it's a, a beautiful reminder of uh, the one that saved us. us healing and grace our hearts always hungered for we pray that you've had a blessed evening with us as we've worshiped together and uh, i pray that the message was an encouragement let's pray father thank you 
for sending your son. Father, thank you for loving us in spite of everything that we've said, everything that we've done. How many times have you turned our backs on you, and yet you love us through it all. Father, we depend on you, and right now we need your touch in this land. Father, we need you to come. We need you to guide. We need you to direct. Father, we need wisdom to know what to do. But Father, through it all, we're going to trust you because we know that you're in control. Be with us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.